Okay, so this is um, our critical discourse for week two. Um, we're going to be talking about David Orr, the video that we had to watch, and um, our experience on Tuesday with Chris, um, and our experience in Mystic Vale. So I'll start. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, how I felt about being in Mystic Vale with Chris, um, and the activities that we did. I thought it was, I, I personally have a lot of experience doing outdoor activities with kids, um, and every time I do them it just re-emphasizes how important it is. Um, even us, like our, our entire class afterwards was talking about how nice it was to get out, to just... Why do you think it's important? Well, I think it's, I think it's important because I was kidding, because I'm... I know, I'm just, <laughs> I'm wondering, because I'm, I'm sitting here wondering. I think it's important because, um... Sometimes you feel like you're in a box because you are in a box in school. You're in a complete box. So uh, getting outside of that box really opens up, I think unconsciously on a lot of levels, it opens up your mind and your kind of, um, your ability to let things in a little bit, let experiences, let what people say, what people, what you talk about. I think it, it opens your mind a little bit more to it. Gives you a sense of connectedness, I guess. Mm -hmm. And it's just calming. I mean, I can't really explain it, but I feel like a lot of the times just being outside is a lot more common than being inside. Um, and yeah, the activity, the blind, the blind, we had the activity that we did was you had to blindfold one person and that you had to lead the other person um, just using your voice and directions and then lead them away and then they had to refine the place using their senses that aren't their sight. Um, or not their eyes, was uh, a very cool use of your senses um, and really gets you in touch with um, the environment that you're in, not based on what you're seeing. And I think that a lot of the time, obviously, people forget about their other senses because their eyes are, they use their eyes all the time. So um, I think that was a very, it would be a very cool activity with kids. I also really liked the um, I really liked the um, picture frame one because it it forced us to look at something in nature closer than we would have um, closer than we would have uh, without the picture frame and I think that it kind of relates to community and culture because I think if you take a picture frame like our volunteer work what we do we look at homeless. Okay, and we have our stigmas and we have our ideas about the homeless. But now we have taken a picture frame by doing our volunteer work and yeah, taken closer. a closer look and have gotten a little bit more detailed with it to see more mm -hmm. into it, right? So I think that now our picture frame now relates not only to uh, outdoor education, but it also is showing us that we need to look deeper into some things to get a greater sense of awareness or of connectedness mm -hmm. with it. Yeah. So I like that. Mm -hmm. It's something that you can really bring to the classroom. Yeah. So I think we both really enjoyed our time with Chris on mm -hmm. on Tuesday. Um, and then the video, the David or video, um, was very interesting. It's really yeah. eye-opening, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Like our discussion to cl in class today when you were talking about, you know, the 30-year leg and mm -hmm. what we can do as an individual to help our community. I think really hit home to me because I am quite the preacher, it feels like sometimes, and I think, oh, you need to recycle, and you need to do that, and then when David brought up things like, well, what are you doing? What are you doing? And I think the thing is, is you got to focus on you first and make sure that you're, what you're walk saying, you're walking the talk. Yeah, and I think that that was a slap in the face for me because I've thought about some things that I do. And that's so good. You gotta do this, and yeah. I'm we not talk about fully like practicing them. Going to walk, going to Costco to buy almonds or whatever. Right after class, <laughs> I right after class, Brian was like, "I'm going to Costco to get almond to to get something. Do you need anything?" And I was like, "Oh, get me almonds," and then I stopped. <laughs> I was like, "Wait a minute, don't get me almonds um, from Costco." Yeah, but I think that that brings up like the same point we were talking about. Is like some people can really afford to be that conscious. And some people just can't. I mean, mm. you can be conscious as you want, but if you don't have the money to support an organic lifestyle, or the environment to support it, or the support to support it, uh, it's going to be a lot harder. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think, too, if you have the idea that you're supposed to be doing these things, like recycling, and you're supposed to be eating organically, and you're supposed to be doing practicing 
fair trade and all this, but you don't have the means to do it. Well, now you feel ashamed yeah. that you can't do it because you're going to shop at Walmart because that's the only way you can do it. Mm -hmm. So again, that throws a curveball into it. And you carry that around with you and it really affects, I mean, if you're feeling ashamed about so much of your daily activities, that's going to affect you and how you present yourself to the world because you're like, I'm not, I'm not good enough, I'm not doing good enough. Which like ultimately you just are. stop caring and stop doing. That's what I would do. Exactly. I would take that road and well, be like, Well, you just oh, get so it. overwhelmed with it that you're like, well, you know what? Whatever. Mm -hmm. So I feel like uh, in our class it's really important. And it's like you said, it's really good to keep on reminding yourself that it comes down to what you can do. Mm -hmm. It's like, and you can only do what you can do. You know, you can. But you can do something. You can do something, exactly. But and even you, if you're not going to change, you know, you're not going to stop world pollution in one day in one day <laughs> no you're not but you could be uh, a vessel you know what i mean like a I bridge think that a bridge and i think that even if i'm just thinking a lot now but now saying that oh you know you have no money to do that well you can do one part mm -hmm. of it you know what i mean you can practice one part of it be mm -hmm. it recycling if you do buy things in a lot of packages recycling them and or reusing them that kind of stuff i mean it's, it's small but it would help so. so we can end with a quote. A quote from David Orr that we just we think is phenomenal that David you actually put on the bottom of your emails as well, um, or maybe it was on our syllabus. I'm not. I don't really remember. It's both. But it's the plain fact is that the planet does not need more successful people, but it isn't desperate. It it does desperately need more peacemakers, healers, restorers, storytellers, and lovers of every kind. It needs people who live well in their places. It needs people of moral courage willing to join the fight to make the world habitable to humans. And these qualities have little to do with success as we have defined it. And I think that really talks to both of our critical discourses that we've talked about. And it speaks to our conversation today, and I think it's also just a nice thing to keep in mind. It reminds me of another quote by, I can't remember who it was, but it's, um, don't do what the world needs, do what makes you come alive, because the world needs more people who come alive. Yeah. And I think, too, like, I think right in here it says um, it needs people who live well in their places. And I think Maybe. that's important because I think in your places could be your home, within yourself, mm -hmm. within the greater community. Within your school. Within your teacher. school. And I think, you know, where better place to start than within yourself. So that's what ultimately is going to create a better everyone. Anyway. <laughs> Okay, I think that's, that it? that's it. We're going to stop preaching about <laughs> that's <laughs> number two. <laughs> okay, thank you.